Oh, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about constants and variables. In the previous video, we were looking at how data is represented in the computer. Now we're going to talk about how you can name those pieces, your pieces of data, you know, your variable values, and use them in your program. Before you get into using constants and variables, you got to learn how to define them, what they look like, and how they're used actually, so I have some idea. But let's review quickly the different types of the different data types we know and covered so far. Um, now, in a previous video, I said that uh, uh, much earlier on that everything in computer is just a number, and I showed how it is broken down and gets a potential way of how it can be represented in memory. But basic types uh, basically come in a cate three categories. You have Boolean, which is just true, false, value. That's it. Those are the only values um, you can specify for a Boolean. String, which is a series of or a collection of characters. And we said so a character gets represented by a number. And in Golang, a character is, um, uses Unicode encoding. If you're talking about um, something like English, it might use 8-bit to represent a ASCII character just because um, English characters can, or Western characters can fit into 8-bits. But if you wanted to do something that's more like international or Chinese characters, for example, it might represent 32-bits. And then we have the numeric types. The numeric types are going to be um, the types that represent um, numbers, whether those be whole numbers like 1, 2, 3, 5, 10 million, or floating point numbers like 3.14 or 65.76999. Um, those are going to be a floating point type. And um, float 32 and float 64 is just, um, you know, floating point numbers with a decimal, but it's just how many bits you get to represent. Again, the precision is, gonna, is what you want to think about there. Of course, if you have 32 bits to represent a number um, versus 64, the one that's 64 could represent higher precision. So let's say you're writing a banking application, you're definitely going to want to use um, float 64 instead of float 32 unless you, you have to. Um, you can't do anything else. Um, you int, if you look at the force type there on the numeric and int, they're both going to be of the same size in terms of number of bits or number of bytes, but it's going to depend on which architecture you're on. So if you're on a 32-bit computer, um, it's going to be 32-bit when you use u int or int. If you're on a 64-bit computer, well, that's what it's going to be. Um, again, the difference there is just going to be whether you can use signed or unsigned values, but the number of bits are still going to be um, the same between u int and int. We're not going to talk about uint pointer. We're going to leave that for a next video or two videos down the road, but in the future. Um, and then you see your unsigned 8, unsigned 16, unsigned 32, and of course unsigned 64, and the corresponding, you know, signed 8, 16, 32, and 64. We already talked about float. Complex type, same thing, come in two flavors, complex 64, complex 128. The difference there really is that because a complex number has two parts, the real and the imaginary part, each part, if it's ter um, 32 bits, then uh, made up of, you know, float 32, float 32, then it's going to be a complex 64. If each part is made up of float 64 and float 64, well, then, of course, it's going to be a complex 128. Byte is an alias or just another name for u int 8. So anytime you want to use u int it, just use byte. Um, rune. Um, so this type is pretty much all the other types are in almost any other program, most programming languages. Um, in Java, for example, a byte um, would be like 16 bits. But here a byte is, as you just saw, 8 bits. So what is a rune then? A rune is how you represent an ASCII a, a character, sorry, not an ASCII character, a character, a Unicode character. So that is going to be 32 bits. And the reason for that is, like I said, in Golang, um, your string is made up of not of bytes, but of runes. And so the reason for that is to allow you to write strings that um, you know, are UTF encoded, and each character of that string, if it's a rune, which is 32 bit, then your string can easily represent any international character, such as Chinese characters or whatever. So basically, that's a run of the type. And you know, you don't have to memorize all of them, but you're going to use some more than the others. Just to review again quickly, we said a value is something that gets computed and 
it can actually be a literal, which is something stands for itself, or it can be something that results from a computation like, you know, 6 plus 6 or 3 plus 1 or something like that, or concatenating um, some strings together to get another string, or, you know, doing some Boolean operation to evaluate whether something is true or false. Now, regardless of how you get a value, uh, you might want to use that value several times throughout your program, and you just don't want to keep typing it over and over. And if the value is never going to change during the life of the program, it makes sense to just assign a name to it. And that's what a constant is. It's when you assign a name to a value. And a constant um, and a value works just the same. Everywhere the value, you use that value, just use the name that you use for the constant. And the computer treats it the exact same. So here's some examples. For example, uh, 3.14 value of pi is never going to change. And so... Uh, if you have to use that choice of program several places, instead of keep typing 3.14, 3.14, and possibly miss, uh, messing it up um, or typing it incorrectly, it's best to just introduce a constant, which is a name, and you can call the name pi, and then you just assign the value once, and that's it. And if for whatever reason you ever wanted to change the value of pi, well, just open your program, your source code, change that one place, recompile, and you're good. So now we know, we remember what a value is, and we know how we can use a name. How do we define it? And so this is the formal syntax at the top, const, and the name you're going to give it our identifier, followed by the type, and then equal, and then the value. And so in Go, the name comes before the type. And there are a number of reasons for this, and I'm not going to get into it. Um, I provide a link so you can go read up on it if you like. But it's on, right there on the Google um, Golang homepage on the blogs. And or language definition also, specification also goes through this and explain why. But you start off by saying const, and this is to say that I'm introducing a constant by this name and of this type, and this is the value. And there's also in forward type in forward syntax also, which is you could think of it as shorthand. And that's when you leave out the type and allow Google, Golang to, not Google, Golang to determine the type for you. And most of the time, this is the, the short run way is all you're going to use it because Golang can determine for the, the type that you want to um, use. There's some cases in which you'd want to specify the type, and we'll see that in the example um, in a minute, where, for example, I have con seconds in minutes, u int 8, because it's never going to be bigger than 60, so I might just want to use an unsigned int 8. But I can also leave out the type, and we'll see what type Go chooses for that, and maybe it might well, I know it's going to choose something big and just going to choose an int. And you might say, well, I don't want that for whatever reason. So in cases like that, you might want to specify the type. But for the most part, you, you, you don't have to. There's one other thing. You can only use constants, uh, make constants of the basic types, which are the types that we covered before, which are your complex, your rune, byte, the numeric type, basically all the numeric type, string, and boolean. You can't make um, constants of any other type. You might be thinking, well, what other types are there? Well, later on, we're going to see function is a type. It's a first level type in top um, first classes in Go language, but you cannot make a constant of a function. But for now, <laughs> just stick to making constants with the basic types that we, we have covered and you saw in the previous slide, and you'll be fine because you cannot make constants of anything else anyway. If we look at some code, we'll see that how it's pretty simple to define a type, just like I showed in the uh, previous slide. Const, name, type, and then equal value. And then using it, when I use a print line and just type the, the name of my constant, it just, um, you know, print out the value as expected. Uh, one thing to keep in mind and remember is the reason you call it a constant is because it does not change short the life of your program. Just like I say, if pi is never going to change short your program, you want something like a constant. Now, here's an example where we have some constants and we specify all the types. In the previous one, those were some global types, meaning, well, not quite global. Let's call it package level types. I put them um, before my main program inside of the package. So if I have multiple files belong to the same package, remember in Go, you can have multiple files in packages. We haven't really covered that much yet, but the packages thing, how packages are organized, but if I have another file within the same package, main, it would be able to use those constants like pi that I defined at the package level. But here, I have defined constants inside of a function. 
Now you don't see it here, but when you look at the source code, you're gonna see it's inside of a function. And so you can also define constants at a function level. Then um, I did another set of um, constants, uh, basically it's the exact same constants, except I dropped their type. And then I wanna go to import it and then print that out, the two where I specify the type, where I let go in for the type, and then see what's different. And as you can see, everywhere I put a line, you know, you can look at the corresponding colors to see what it was when I specify it and what it was when um, Golang in for the type. And in all the cases, the thing to take away is that Golang always uses something much bigger. The biggest possible type you can, numeric type you could use there is what it went with. Um, so for example, when I had 3.14, and I said it with the type I want is float 32, even though it would fit in there fine, when I let go in for the type, it just decided to use the biggest floating point, which is six, float 64. Same thing with 60. When I had a number 60 and I said the type should be on sign int eight, um, Golang decided to just make that an int, period. And so you can go down the list and you can see the same thing. Constants are great when you want to use a value repeatedly several places and you don't want to keep typing it. So you introduce a name for it and it's easier to follow. When you see 60 here and 60 there, what do the two 60s mean? So one might be, you know, seconds and minutes and the other one might be, you know, um, minutes and hours. And so you, you kind of want to um, probably tell the, the difference as you use them and you do computation. So, but then there are other times when you do want to use something repeatedly in your program, but the value might change from different places. So let's say you're keeping a count of how many records you've read so far. And so at one place you want to say, well, I've read, print out, I've read six records here and seven records there and so on. And so while you need to know how many records you've read, because the value can change depending on where you are in the, the, the you know, the rest of the program, um, you need to, this value need to change, but you still want to be able to refer to the concept of how many records you've read. And so a constant would not work. It wouldn't allow you to change. Every time you read a record, it won't allow you to update, make an update to that um, value. So this is where variable comes in. And so variable is where you assign an abstraction or a name to a value, and then, but you can change that value just using the variable. And if you remember that we, all our values are stored in memory, so a variable is, basically associating a name with some location in memory, and then you can just change what's stored at that memory location. And so let's see how we can define and use variables. And they look very much like constant, um, it's just something slightly different. This is what I'm talking about when I say um, a variable looks some very similar to a constant in the sense that you just change the word C-O-N-S-T to V-A-R, to say I'm using a variable instead of a constant. And it looks the same, you know, var name, the variable, and then the type equals value. And again, here you can do the inferring of the type. And you can see, again, change const to var. That's it, literally. And everything else pretty much stays the same. And the only benefit now with a variable is that you can, once you have that name, that variable, you can, you can change the value. Let's take a look at um, some example of defining it variables and using them. So I have a variable here, again, this is at this package level, meaning that if I have other files say in the same package name or the same package, belong to the same package, they can use those um, variables that I've defined there on line six through nine. The thing to note on line nine is I have this variable called Chinese character and it's a type rune and there's a character where I define it. Uh, you wanna look and see when I print it out. So on line 17, I said print line Chinese character but if you look at the output, the last line of the output, it gives me the number 19990. Again, remember, every character gets represented as a number. Now, if it belongs to a string, well, then the computer knows how to print out a string when I say print out a string. But you can rest assured that my string variable is made up of runes, and each rune is just a number. Uh, it's just that because it's defined as a string, it knows how to print it out. But here, a rune is a numeric type, if you remember what we said a few slides ago. And so it prints it out as a number, even though I type it in as a character. There's just one way I can type in a number, but it's a number anyway. So on this slide and the next slide, what we're gonna see here is we've, again, defined 
a type explicitly for our variables and then we print them out and no surprise is exactly what we say we want the type to be. But then now if we look at this slide where we drop the actual explicit type and let Golang import it for us, you can see that oh, it pretty much got everything we wanted um, for one price. Instead of using float 32, it used float 64. And again, like I said, if you want to use float and point number, you probably want to, it to be as precise as possible. So you probably want to go to the larger float and point anyway. But again, there are cases where you don't need the extra decimal points. So float 32 might be exactly what you, all you need. So you, as you program, you're going to learn when you need what type, size, and will make sense. Just to drive this idea home. Regardless of whether you're using a constant or a variable, we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to worry about any corner cases, nuances, or anything like that. We're going to basically say that oh, these things, your values, your data, must be stored somewhere in memory. And because it's going to be stored in memory, you have to refer to it, but that's when you introduce constants and variables. And all this means is for a piece of memory, depending on what type of thing your data we're talking about, that set of bytes gets associated with that um, variable or constant or the name you give it. So here in my example, I have looked at a piece of memory. There's all my data and these are the addresses where those bytes are. And so you can imagine the first row is the first box there is byte zero, is at address zero and go across the screen up to um, address nine and then it start over 10, blah, blah, blah. And so price might be placed at, at by um, address location zero and because it's a 64-bit value, I need eight bytes, and so that's gonna run from zero, address zero to address seven. And flag is just one byte value, and so that might just occupy the byte at address location eight, and you can see the rest. I mean, it's just an illustration. <laughs> Don't say, think of this as this is exactly how it is, but it's a simplified way, and it's not too far out from the truth, actually. So. Uh, just to help drive home that point. Again, thanks for joining me. I hope I've been able to teach you something. Um, if you like what, you, what I'm doing, please spread the word. Come again, post questions, or you know, just tell me you like the direction or you want me to change something. Um, I don't mind the feedback. Okay, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.